Hello, dear ones. Hello, EWTN family. You're at home. You're at home with Jim and Joy. We count it a great blessing to be with you, and we want to hear from you. Well, you know, you are an important part of the family, and we do want to hear from you. We want you to give us a jingle. All you have to do is dial 205-271-2971 or 1-800-221-9460 or send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. We're going to have a great guest. We're going to have a great show coming up for you. But first, we're going to talk about kind of like how normal we were this weekend. We had a normal, whatever normal is, weekend. In our life, I yes. so enjoyed the weekend. It wasn't so full, mm -hmm. traveling to different places or having, you know, everybody over from our family. I we know. did have two of the grandchildren over, two of our granddaughters. That was really special. Yes. And it seemed like every meal at least that I ate, was wonderful. You were hungry. I was hungry this weekend. And so whether you made a meal or we went out to eat, the weather was beautiful here in the greater Birmingham area. That was tremendous. Mm -hmm. It was Trinity Sunday, right? You really got to sing <clears throat> some of my favorite hymns. Yeah. If the preacher got it wrong about preaching about the Trinity. Some of them may have. As some of them may have. You could always count on those hymns. It just kind of like sets yeah. it straight. Like Trinity Sunday is like heresy Sunday or yeah. something. You try to explain the Trinity and get in a little bit of trouble. But our priest did a great they job. He did a great job, but I love the hymns. It just kind of like, man, I could have closed my eyes and went far, far away singing yeah. those songs yeah. about who Father, Son, and Holy Spirit yeah. are. Yeah, I mean, focusing upon the essence of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one in divinity. As the Catechism says, that external uh, exchange of love eternally and our being able to enter into that love that we know the name of our God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that he's about relationship within himself. Relationships are the most important thing, as one of our guests said recently, next to our relationship with God. So that was wonderful. I want to speak about that meal again, one of those meals. You were cooking some red sauce, smelled beautiful. Usually you just make a plain red sauce. And, uh, but then I saw you putting some uh, meat in it. You browned mm -hmm. some meat, put it in. I'm saying, oh, what's going on here? This is a little bit different. So you, you said, do you know what I'm making for you? So I said, well, I'm not quite sure. And so I stepped out I of the said, room. I said, then you need to get out of the room and I'll surprise you. Right. And so when I came back, you made something we haven't had in a long time, which is ravioli. Right. Because we're watching our weight and what we're eating and blah, blah, blah. Probably wouldn't have said that I wanted it, but you made ravioli. Right. Nice size ravioli. Cheese, Cheese ravioli. ravioli. Al dente. Perfect. perfect. Sauce was great. Cutting it was into that. It's like love, beautiful, yeah, it beautiful. Was good. And I could hear your father's voice because when I was like 14 or 15 years old, your father, you mm -hmm. he, my name is Joyce by my parents who named me Joyce, but I go I by I changed Joy. your name to you Joy. changed my name. And he used to call me Jers, this little my Italian father. guy. Yeah. yeah. And so he, he took me in the kitchen and said, hey, Jers, you need to learn how to make a ravioli. And why did I need to know how to make a ravioli? But I said, okay. Because so you were marrying an Italian. I, That's well, I, I was 14. I didn't know I was going to marry you then. <laughs> and so I watched him, and he said, now when they float to the top. And he was really instructing me. When they me, float to the top, what? Then you know they're done. They're all done. Right, you yes. better let them boil. It's important. Do you know to this day when I make ravioli, I hear his voice, and I say, Mr. Pinto, I'm doing my best. It was yeah. so beautiful. But the other thing that I got to do this weekend, which I so needed to do, and I think every woman out there would understand, I got to be merciless with my closets. And I started going through drawers and closets and clothes. I get scared when you go into closets. Not your uh, closets, my closets. Well, I went everywhere. Yeah. And I, I was... You know, how, oh, I'm going to save that. I need that. I need nothing. And, or I'm going to do a better thing. I'm going to, you know, sell it. Blah, blah, blah. No, I just got rid of Six it. Six huge bags. Six yeah. huge bags of clothes. I got rid of dresses that I wore when my children got married. Like they were all married a really long time. I don't, I'm not going to wear those dresses again. They were one hit wonders. They served me well, but they were done. Yeah. And so, and what a feeling. I went through drawers and just like, and was yelling at myself. Why? Why are you keeping this stuff? Why? And so, I've only just begun. Mm. And so we're going closet by closet, drawer by drawer. 
but we're really going after it because that's what part of spring is about, right. right? Part of spring is uh, you can spiritualize it. You want to do and you want to do an inventory of your interior life. Um, running to confession is always a good thing. Okay. Do an examination of your conscience and just say, get the stuff out. Get the stuff out. And it really, it was a good thing. And um, I, so I went to a place in town and went up there, pulled the car up, you beep the horn, the guys come out, they take your stuff, and I, and they were like, ma'am, you want a receipt for this? <laughs> I said, no, God knows what it's worth, yeah. and it's out of my house, and s someone else could use it. Oh, I we all need right. weekends like that, just relaxing, focusing upon yourself, getting your house in order. It was just normal for us. Yeah. Now, next weekend we'll be wild and crazy, but it was a wonderful lazy kind of weekend for us so thank god i'm thankful for that well we're going to have a great show and we have a beautiful guest all the way from augusta georgia her name is allison palfi and she is the principal of immaculate conception catholic school in augusta georgia you could go to their website it's icaugusta.org it's all about catholic special education for special needs children you're going to want to hear this you're going to be greatly encouraged. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy. You know, this is a live show, and we would really like to hear from you. So give us a jingle at 205-271-2971 or 1-800-221-9460, or you can always send us an email at EWTN.com. Well, our guest today is Allison Palfi, and she is the principal of Immaculate Conception Catholic School in Augusta, Georgia. But before we meet Allison and hear about the unique special education program at her school, let's meet some of the students and find out what brought them to Immaculate Conception's program from the public school system. Let's take a look. When you deal with any kind of special needs, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you just it doesn't matter the severity of the diagnosis. Everything's a little bit different. No experience is the same. But I think especially if you have a child with special needs, um, I know a lot of other parents are fighting, constantly having to fight the school district to get the right services that they need for their child with special needs. He's a joy. He's my child. I'm proud of him, regardless if he was artistic or general child. He's regular to me. My son Rohan, he is six and just started first grade. Jameis is 11 years old. Isaiah is 10 years old. And he has autism spectrum disorder. Asperger's. Severe ADHD. We also deal with some anxiety. Sensory processing disorder. He is severe ADHD, which is an understatement. He's an artistic kid. Isaiah, what's today? Today is... Thursday. Thursday. That means it is October. October. The what? 18th. What? That's right. We actually didn't get this diagnosis until very late. So education in general has been a struggle. Last year he was in kindergarten in the school district and it didn't go so well. I didn't feel it was the right setting for him. He was put in a mainstream class with 20 plus other kids. It wasn't good. He was in the class with a lot of behaviors. Pretty much from the first day he was being bullied. He simply cannot pay attention in a class full of 20 other kids. So it was holding him back from what he could really do. The breaking point, I guess they had been playing volleyball in PE and um, he didn't do it right. And one of the older boys followed him into the locker room and choked him, slammed up against the locker and said, I'm gonna kill you. The video you saw is from a documentary, Immaculate Conception School, a piece of God's plan. A piece mm -hmm. of God's plan, that's what it's entitled. Mm -hmm. Allison, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Thank you all for having me. Well, it's, it's a blessing to be here. We yeah. actually didn't get to see the piece, we heard the piece, but I was watching you. And you just seem so moved and so reflective 
just hearing the voices. Right. Well, I, I, I love our students. Yeah. Um, you grow very attached to them um, because you become like a mother to, to them because they're with you seven hours, you mm -hmm. know, every day, five days a week. Um, and then the parents, you know, you hear their stories, you hear about the trials and tribulations they've been through with public school education yeah. and what brought them to Immaculate Conception this year. Um, so you feel for them and you want the best for them always. I mean, I'm proud of our program. I, I, what we're doing at Immaculate Conception, I hope can be done across yeah. America, across mm -hmm. the world. Well, tell, tell us about your coming to the school, when that was, and how you got involved with this particular aspect. I mean, it's always been a school, excellent education, mm -hmm. but then uh, dealing with the gift of children with special needs and incorporating that into the school. Right. Well, Immaculate Conception Catholic School has been around for over 100 years oh. in the Augusta area. Um, so it's an old school with a new mission. And I came to the school three years ago. Um, and I came not thinking I was going to start a special needs program at the school, but just coming as the principal, new principal at the school. Um, but we have a very, um, I've told you all this before, a very Holy Spirit driven pastor there at the school. In fact, his name is Father Jacek Schuster. Um, and my first year there, he won the National Catholic Education Association's Award for Pastor oh, of the Year wonderful. for his work at the school, specifically at the school. And really from the start, he just kept saying to me um, that the school had a special mission. He felt like the school had a special mission. And so he tasked myself and our development director, uh, Mrs. Debbie DeRoller, who's here with me today, yeah. mm -hmm. um, to figure out what that mission was. And so as a new principal there, you know, you have to kind of feel your way, mm -hmm. figure out what's working, what's not working. And my very first year there, we had two families come to us um, with Catholic families who had what I would consider moderately um, special needs children. They had moderate needs. Mm -hmm. um, and we tried placing them in the classrooms with the rest of the kids, you know, making accommodations, modifications, but really their needs were greater than what we could mm -hmm. handle at the school. Uh, the teachers tried their best, but it just, it didn't work. And unfortunately, we had to let both of those students go my first year mm -hmm. there. They weren't able to complete the year with us. And that really hurt my heart, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. because you know, Catholic is universal and we're supposed to be inclusive and yet we couldn't provide the appropriate education for these students. Right. Um, so then going into the second year, we were, we were praying about it. Um, and I happened to be out running. I, I love to run just to release stress and happened to be out running. And we had batted around a lot of ideas for our school. Um, we're downtown Augusta, Georgia. There's absolutely no grass around our school, so it's all concrete. Um, we don't have room to build a gym. There's no ball fields, so we can't provide a, a thriving sports program. And out running, the thought came to me, why not special education? You have all these families coming that you're having to turn away from your school. Wouldn't this be, you know, a good idea? So I brought it to Father, and, and he instantly said, yes, this is, this is what you need to do. Now you all need to go and do research and figure out how you're going to do it um, so that we can present it to the diocese because there's no schools in our diocese that have special education. So Father was feeling that there was a special mission for the school. Mm -hmm. He didn't think at that point that it was necessarily special needs, children with special needs? Right. In the a beginning, he didn't. He just knew that there was something we were supposed to so be doing. So then you get this revelation <laughs> that right. let's focus on special needs. Right. Children. And that's kind of the reason when the documentary is, you know, a piece of God's you know, plan. We kind of see ourselves as these puzzle pieces started falling into place. These events that happened that seemed um, kind of tragic at the time, you know, having to um, dismiss students mid-year or not be able to accept families. We realized it was really just the Holy Spirit kind of laying that foundation for when the time was right for us. Um, it wouldn't have been right the first year and it wouldn't have been right the second year, but it was right this year. So you, you're getting this sense, we need to be as much as we can a full-blown Catholic school that offers our education to everybody, all children. So yeah. talk to us about the development of that process now. Well, after we came up with the idea and we looked around the community to see what was going on in the community, we saw that there was a great need. And the more we talked to people in the community, the more we realized that the services in Augusta were very limited <coughs> for special needs children. And that's what you heard our parents talking about, you know, in that little clip that was there. Um, so we did research. We um, contacted the State Department of Education to see what were the laws that pertain to Catholic schools or private schools in general to be able to host special needs programs in their schools. Um, we had the fire department come out to make sure we were ADA compliant, which we were by a blessing of God when the school um, moved to its current location, it was brought up to standards. So we had no structural work to put into place um, there at all. 
Um, and then we started to contact or try to contact other dioceses who are already doing it because I'm a big proponent of why reinvent something that's already in existence. Why not just learn from right. other people? Yeah. Um, but I had a really hard time with finding dioceses that had special needs programs. Um, I was able to contact St. Louis, the Diocese of St. Louis, and then also the Diocese of Philadelphia. And they worked with me, some of their superintendents and assistant superintendents worked with me. They got me in contact with principals of schools that were already doing yeah. special needs programs. Did you go to secular institutions we or did private it, institutions? We did in Georgia. We okay. went up to the Atlanta area, which has a plethora of schools, okay. private schools up there, much more than the Augusta area has. Um, and we went to one independent Catholic school called the Sophia Academy. Uh, to see their model. And then we also went to one of their new charter or magnet schools there in the Atlanta area that's full special education, just to see what they were doing, what programs that they were using. So you're looking at a wide range, anything you can find in terms of how people are doing, what they're doing, what's mm -hmm. working for them, what isn't working for them. That's how correct. about parental involvement or people involved in the right. parish in terms of input? Um, we held parent meetings. We started, um, once we presented the idea to the diocese, you know, and they were on board with what we were doing, they thought it was a good idea, they saw that we had done our research. Um, we started holding parent meetings to make sure that there was a need. It was kind of like that build it, they will come. That's right. So we were laying foundations to make sure that there were people who would want to come to our program and our parent meetings were really highly um, attended. In fact, some of our open houses were the best open houses we had had you know, there as far as the turnout because it was just something so novel in our area. There were no private Catholic or, or you know, um, otherwise private schools with special needs programs yeah. to the degree that we wanted to offer it. We yeah. wanted to do it all the way yeah. for all types of disabilities, not just those with learning disabilities or with some mild disabilities. If we were going to do it, we were going to do it completely. When the children are coming to your school and you have seven students? We did. Our inaugural year, we had seven uh, blessings at our school. <laughs> that is so exciting. Now, are they coming from your parish? Are they coming from the community? Are they coming from other Catholic churches? What is the makeup of the, of the students that are coming? Everything that you just said. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, students from other Catholic churches, but we have a lot of students who are just in the community. They're not Catholic. They're Christian and they just wanted their parents are willing to really make a huge sacrifice to send them to our school because they wanted something better than what they were getting. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when parents came to you in, in your first year and you had nothing to offer them, right? And right. so what was the, what, what, what's the parents' recourse? Where do, where do they go? What do they do? They have no recourse but mm -hmm. the public school at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have to take what they're given, you know. Some of, one of our students that's with us this year was being bused almost an hour and a half away from his home because that was the program that the public school felt was best for him, uh, the best placement. So, you know, he was getting picked up very early and getting home very late, um, which wasn't, you know, conducive for his lifestyle or his parents' lifestyle. It wasn't good for him. Mm -hmm. When you said we want to go as broadly as we can, be inclusive regarding kids with special needs, what does that mean? What are the different categories there? Well, our first year, and we told parents this when we were having our meetings, it was kind of a first come, first serve uh, basis. We had all of our, <clears throat> you know, knowledge in place, but as far as setting up our programs, we really couldn't determine that until we determined or who was actually registered at the school, if that makes sense to yeah. you. So during the first year, based on the students that came and registered, we were able to have a moderately intellectually impaired classroom, which is self-contained. The students uh, receive all of their academic um, work in there with a special ed teacher. Okay. Um, we have uh, an inclusion classroom, which means those students um, academically are on level with their peers, but there is some socialization. They need to have um, some help from the special needs team with maybe doing some accommodations and modifications, but they have very mild disabilities. Okay. And then we have um, what we call our learning lab, which is what public schools call a resource program. And it's for students with specific learning disabilities where they are pulled out to work on reading, writing, and or math, depending on what their deficits are. But then they return for science, social studies, and religion in the gen ed classroom at our school. Okay. And what is your student uh, teacher ratio for your school. Right. So all of our classrooms are capped at 10 students. And when we cap at 10 students, that includes our special needs students, even those in self-contained classrooms. Because our, our belief is that all kids need to be together, regardless of what makes you unique or what makes me unique. We all share in this bond of being God's children. 
And so they all spend time together throughout the day. Um, and so even though I have two students this year in our self-containing program, they take two spots in our fifth grade classroom because that's their grade placement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your staff working with these children, who they are, what yeah. are their skills, did you have to hire more people, how are you dealing with it? Um, I have a phenomenal staff. Um, my teachers are all heart. Um, they're there early, they stay late, they're there on weekends. I mean, they never miss a school event with these students. Uh, most of them have dual degrees. They're um, <clears throat> with master's degrees, maybe in special education, but also with either early childhood, elementary, or middle school education. I have some that are just um, special needs teachers. That's their certification. And some that are just general ed teachers. Um, but they come on board knowing that they're going to have to work with all students, that our model is, is in the end inclusive for everyone. Okay. Well, we want to take a look at a clip that shows what the teachers do and how they work with the kids. So let's check this out. We work on a lot of functional life skills, a lot of cooking, folding clothes, calculator skills. You know, that's a functional life skill. If they're at the grocery store, they're going to need to know how much bananas and oranges cost together, and they can whip out their phone and use a calculator. But in doing that, I can incorporate math and you know, pull that academics into it then too. I love her. For the short length of time that I've been here, she's doing so well. She's working with him with adding, counting money, answer questions without repeating. You know, she's awesome. What colors do y'all want to write with today? Red and green? Red, of course. Blue? Whoa, Blue. throwing a curveball at me today. <laughs> the parent support at this school has been amazing. It's so nice to have similar high expectations and have the parents agree with me and want to push their kids like I want to push them. There's a lot of parent involvement which makes a huge difference in a school. Oh, I am in constant communication with my parents, emailing, back and forth always, calling. So this way I can see like day to day how he's doing, how he's been feeling, and we can, you know, adjust what we need to do accordingly. So how difficult is the process to get something like this going at a school? You don't hear about it very much at Catholic schools. How difficult is it and what are the rewards of it? Right, well the rewards are you can't even speak about how rewarding the program is, um, not only to the special needs students because, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, they've made phenomenal gains. Um, I've been in education 22 years and the results we, we got this year, I couldn't even anticipate that they, they would make um, as progress as quickly as they did. But the, the real gain is, you know, these special needs kids are, were invited to some of their first birthday parties. Some of them had never been included by their peers before. Um, I know my own son, um, you know, came to me about two months into the year and said, hey, mom, I thought you were starting the special needs program here at the school. Where, where are the special needs kids? Right. Yeah. As um, if they were going to look different and be right. different. And so that was so beautiful because you're the principal and your children go to the school. And that was his response because they had funneled in right. so well. Well, our pastor had the year before we got the program started had decided you know we needed to prepare the students and that was one of the tips that we got when we were doing our research that you know you need to take the students who've already been at the school and prepare them that they're going to be kids who are coming in who may act differently um, may have different needs may you may ha have to give them things that you can't have yourself um, as simple as they may need to wear tennis shoes um, where you need to wear your uniform shoes every day. And it's not that we're showing partiality, but that's life, you know, we all are, are different. So Father came up with this idea that we were gonna make everybody heroes, you know, and we're gonna start a hero program where these kids who are already there were going to become the superheroes of the new students coming in. They were gonna take them under their wings yeah. and protect them and take care of them. Yeah. Um, and that's what happened. Um, the kids embraced each other. You come into our school, there is a spirit there that, that I've never seen anywhere else. They just, the kids <clears throat> love each other. They take care of each other. Um, Isaiah, which is one of the students you saw on the clip there, um, he's, on, he's on our safety patrol. And he can see a car coming, you know, half mile down the road. He can tell us who's coming, what make of car they're in. You know, far better than the rest of us. We're, we're sitting there peering through the glass and, and he's got it all done and he's got the car door open while we are just getting ready to say hello. So. That is um, so wonderful. Well, we're gonna take a break 
And when we come back, we will have more from Allison. So find out about this comprehensive special education program at Immaculate Conception Catholic School in Augusta, Georgia. Go online to icaugusta.org or you can call them at 706-722-7964. Nine nine six four, but we want you to call us. So give us a jingle. We'd love to hear from you at two zero five two seven one two nine seven one or one eight hundred two two one nine four six zero. Always sends us an email, Jim and Joy at ewtn.com. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. More with Allison. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and we're speaking with Principal Allison Palfey and talking about education for children with special needs. Well, we're going to go straight to an email, and it says, Families of children with special needs already have so many extra expenses, like medical bills, assistive devices, etc., and private education seems like it would be an enormous financial burden. Mm. How can it be affordable for a family to pursue a Catholic education for their child with special needs? And this is from Angela. Well, um, I can't speak for other states, but I can speak for Georgia. One of the first things that we did for our school was get ourselves on the Georgia Special Needs Scholarship List. Yeah. And what that means in Georgia is that a family with, special, with a child with special needs can divert the money that the state was sending to the public school oh, really? to the private school of their choice um, as long as that private school is on the list. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we did everything we needed to do to become compliant. We were, uh, got our approval in July of last year. And so most of our students are able to get scholarships from the state of Georgia from anywhere from four to $8,000. That's fantastic. Which helps offset their tuition quite a bit. Also in Georgia, we have the Grace Scholarship Program, which is a Catholic um, scholarship program, which mm -hmm. allows people to take their um, income tax, their state income tax, and put it a dollar for dollar credit right. um, into the scholarship program. So we're able to award Grace Scholarships to our special needs families as well. And then we go on, our school um, even seeing a greater need because we really want, we know it's expensive. And it's expensive for the school. Families have to understand that we don't get federal funding the way public schools do. So we have to raise the money for everything um, that we want to pro provide for our students at our school. So we actually started a special needs scholarship fund. It's called 10 Dimes for a Lifetime of Learning. And what we have asked, we, our goal is to raise $100,000. Um, and we've raised about 10000 so far this year. It started in on the Immaculate Conception, which is the feast mm -hmm. day for our school. That's, and it was also the, uh, the kickoff for our, our year of mercy. It has our, to succeed that way. For that's Pope right. Francis. <laughs> that's right. We left it in Our Lady's <laughs> hands. Um, and so what we've just asked is that people across America, and we hope our EWTN viewers today, we're just asking for everybody to give $1, 10 dimes, um, to provide a chance for a special needs child to get the Catholic education and the private education that they deserve to have. Is it. that on your website? It's on our website okay. um, at icaugusta.org. There's a giving link there, but we also uh, set up a GoFundMe account for the same scholarship, and that's at GoFundMe uh, forward slash icaugusta. Okay. Well, okay. great. We have a caller. This is Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is calling us from Colorado. Elizabeth, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Allison? Yes, ma'am. I wanted to um, just thank God that we have somebody like you in schools teaching uh, special needs children. My daughter, Christina, she has autistic spectrum disorder, and she's 19. She just graduated this year. But for her... It was really hard for her when she was smaller. She had gone to uh, some classes at a parish, and uh, she was in the class with a lot of kids, and the kids were making noise, and she started getting irritated, and she started screaming, be quiet, I can't hear the teacher, I want to learn. <laughs> and the teacher couldn't do one-on-one -on -one with no. her. And she said, well, I cannot teach your child, so you're going to have to find another way to teach her. And it, very, it disheartened me so very much. Mm -hmm. But I see you and seeing what you do 
it's awesome for these kids that have special needs. And I want to thank God for what you do. Well, thank you and uh, keep us in your prayers because, you know, uh, along with financial um, support, we need prayer support, spiritual support for our school as well. I mean, it's a new program and we're trying to grow our program to expand that, um, that place for kids with special needs. But the story we just heard, I've heard from a lot of parents, you know, when you start something new, everyone has a story and everybody's right. been touched in their life, either in their own families or with friends. Um, that have someone that they know with special needs. Yeah. And one of the greatest blessings this year is in two days on Wednesday, which is our last day of school at, um, at Immaculate Conception, one of our special needs students will receive his first communion. Mm. Um, and what it's a beautiful. blessing that is. What a great way to end the year for this new program um, that we started, which is really to, to give every single child of God an opportunity. Um, to be loved, to be safe, but also to be educated, to get an education that's appropriate um, for, for him or her. Right, and, and the beauty in the, the Catholic environment is you're also, you're catechizing, you're sacramentalizing that child right. for their spiritual journey too, and how beautiful that is, and that, that's not gonna happen in the public school. That's right. You know, and then I love the student-teacher ratio, mm -hmm. you know, where we know this is, and I'm sure those teachers who have 10 students, they're at they're at, they're at their max because they they're, you do a great thing how you evaluate each student, right? We do. So in the beginning, each student gets evaluated as to all of their gifts and talents and their weaknesses and strengths, mm -hmm. and then they get educated from that place. That's correct. Every student that comes to us, whether they're in our special needs program or whether they're just in our general education program, they all get an individualized learning plan. Um, and the philosophy behind that is why hold a child back just because a child's in second grade but is capable of third or fourth grade work, why should a wall or a placement hold that child back from mm -hmm. learning? So we need to make sure that we're doing um, the right thing by every single child. So we test at the beginning of the year, we test at the middle point of the year, we test again at the end of the year. These plans are evolving documents, you know, they're kind of like our roadmaps for the children, but we know sometimes along the way things have to be added um, and sometimes children reach the goals um, sooner than we expected them to. This every child being kind of evaluated and mm -hmm. tested in a special program for each, this was a result though of really welcoming and thinking through children with special needs, it was. wasn't it? So you did that with them and one of the beautiful things that took place was why, why aren't we doing this for everyone? That's exactly right. What are their right. special mm -hmm. needs, mm -hmm. positive or difficult, and how do we advance every child? I mean, that, that's incredible. It was, and, and again, the catalyst was the special needs program. Once we saw what we were gonna do for that program, you were right, we said, why not do this for everyone? Mm -hmm. Why should only students who have diagnosed disabilities have a specialized learning plan and everybody else is kind of taught the same? So you're saying you've got kids really moving around grade levels because- We do, we had preschoolers that were going up to kindergarten for reading this year. Yeah. We had um, several first graders that were up in the second and third grade classrooms for their reading um, this year as well. We've had sixth graders doing seventh and eighth grade math. It just, it just depended, you know, the testing um, and, and also teacher observation of what they were capable of. Mm -hmm. um, but our teachers, they teach each child as though that was the only child in that room. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you're right, when you have 10 students, it sounds like that would be a dream job. Yeah. But when you're doing 10 students and you're doing it correctly, those teachers put in a lot of um, sweat, sweat, blood, and tears <laughs> to make sure that those students are getting um, what they need. But the end result is those students have done so much better um, this year. They've made larger gains than I've seen in the past mm -hmm. with our students. Well, that's exciting. Well, we're going to go straight to another email. It says, when my children were in school, the school district was very often about including special need kids in school activities and keeping them visible instead of secluded in their own part of the school. I think this goes a long way in making sure these children are not excluded forgotten or feared. I'm so glad this is extending to Catholic education. And that's a great thank you from Barb. And you know, um, I thought about when you were sharing, Allison, just about all of the beautiful virtues that get taught to everybody. Right. We have to be patient. We have to be kind. We have to be forgiving. We have to be loving. And, and what an environment of education and in a spiritual environment, a good, strong right. Catholic school for everybody to come up along that way, even for the teachers. Right. I'm sure everyone's spiritual life has grown just because we've all been stretched, right? They have grown. Um, 
all of us, from the priest all the way down to the, you know, to the preschool student. Um, but we get together, we start our day off in prayer every morning. Um, Father had a Blessed Sacrament Chapel put in our school. And so we actually have Jesus right there with us. Oh, and that's beautiful. where we begin our day in prayer together. <coughs> and we pray, you know, morning, and we pray at noon, and we pray before the kids go home every day. We all go as a school family to Mass every week. And the special needs students take place in Mass just like the general education students do. They sing in the choir. They take the gifts up. Um, one, of the greatest, one of the greatest stories I have is one of our students um, who is not Catholic, but he's learned the Our Father this year at school because okay. we pray it three times a day, the Our Father as a school family. And he was able at his own Easter service at his church to be the one who said the Our Father. Mm -hmm. And I keep that on my phone. Um, actually, they took a video of it and sent it, and I told his mom, I said, I keep that so for days when I feel that things are maybe not working the way I want them to work or, you know, it gets a little bit trying sometimes. Um, I, I watch that video, and I remember this is what God's plan is, and, you know, perseverance yeah. and fortitude is what we have to have through all the, you know, the little yeah. bumps along the way. Well, it really sounds like family. It is. And we are a big family institution. there. educational institution. And that's what the Catholic Church is, isn't it? A it family, is. including everyone. It is. Is Pope Francis an inspiration for you in this? Oh, of course. He's inclusive very much mm -hmm. so. Well, and it's wonderful to see the Pope. Um, you know, he's always taking picture with, with children or adults with disabilities. And he has made such a push to be inclusive in the Catholic Church. Um, and so our school is just one small little, you know, symbol of that inclusiveness because everybody is welcomed. Um, we don't turn anybody away, and if we don't have a program for you, then we will do our best to create a program that meets your needs. Mm -hmm. Well, how difficult is it going to be that after you've been on EWTN, I'm sure there's <laughs> going so. to be a waiting <coughs> list, right? I mean, because you're, you're out there, we're telling the world, everyone in Augusta, Georgia, all that's going on, and hopefully other schools and other principals who right. are watching and saying, wait a minute, we can do that. We can open wide our hearts and the doors of the church and the mm -hmm. doors. How, how has the church received it, the little church that's there? I know you're in a landlock of just what right. your building is. But I, I, can't, I can't imagine it's like you have to be a lighthouse in that community. Well, the, our church, Most Holy Trinity Catholic Church, it's embraced the program from the very beginning. Um, and they are gracious enough to let me speak at Mass and then let, you know, the children come and they see the children performing at Mass, the choir. Um, so that's been a blessing. Uh, but as far as getting to, you know, other communities, you know, a lot of times I'll hear people, and I actually had the Diocese of Charlotte come to visit our school this year, who I found out has been doing special education. I didn't know that um, because the networking in Catholic special, special education, it's evolving, but it's mm -hmm. not, you know, uh, all together there yet. And one of the things that I found out that was unique about our school is that we do it all in one, one place. Most dioceses, you know, put one program in one school and another program in a different school. And we just jumped right into the deep end of the pool and decided we would put everything at Immaculate Conception and God's blessed us. And what I would say to other parents, I'd say go to your, you know, schools, go to your superintendents um, and talk to them about it. We, of course, are open to speaking with anybody about our program. Um, but there's nothing to be afraid of because I truly believe it's, you know, the will of God and God blesses what he starts. What would you say to we're... principals and educators that are saying, gee, I'd like to do something don't you know, be afraid. in this area? Don't That's be afraid. That's what I'd say, don't be afraid. A lot of times, you know, the biggest thing that comes out is financially, how are you going to do this? As it always seems to come down to that. And God has provided, you know, we've had benefactors come out. We've had people give large amounts of money to the school. Um, we've had matching grants this year. Uh, Mrs. DeRoller uh, has written grants that we've gotten this year to be able to, uh, to update like our technology, which is so important for students with special needs. Um, God's provided and he'll continue to provide for our yeah. school, but I think he'd provide for other schools. You just have to be willing to take that risk to say, it's something I wanna do um, and get started with it. And I'd say start small. We started small, seven students. And yes, I'd like a school that's full, but I want to do it slowly. I don't want to, to overnight become a packed house either mm -hmm. um, because then you lose that individualization. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we do it in a manner that we're always able to meet the needs of the kids because mm -hmm. it's about the kids first <clears> and foremost. Think of that scripture, don't despise small beginnings. That's right. But you've got to have heart, as you said, and put it out there. And, and people will come not only to, to use that, uh, but to give towards that beautiful work of, of including all children in a wonderful Catholic education. That's correct. 
Well, if you want to hear more about Allison, you go to Immaculate Conception Catholic School in Augusta, Georgia. Go online to icaugusta.org or you can call them at 706-722-99464. That number again is 706-722-9964. We're going to be back in a couple of minutes and we're going to hear from Joan Lewis and Father Leonard. But Allison, I want to say thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for small beginnings. It's exciting to see what God is doing and to say there's room for everyone. And we and thank God yeah. for your pushy Polish priest <laughs> who pushes in the power of the Holy Spirit to yeah, see this he, come to pass. He's an awesome force. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back where you are at home with Jim and Joy. You know, and if you wanted to donate, all you have to do, we had Allison Palfion. on. If you were interested and you said, you know, I could donate a dollar, I could throw five dollars, you could just go to their website. It's icaugusta.org. They have a little donate page, and maybe you want to be a part of that beautiful education program that's happening there in Augusta, Georgia. Well, you know, you could come down here and visit us, right? You could mm. meet Father, you could have met mm. our guest, you could meet cute Jim. We would love to have you here. All you need to do is take a pilgrimage and come on down. You just give us a jingle at 205-271-2966 or email pilgrimages at EWTN.com. we got Pittsburgh people here we today. We have Pittsburgh yes. people here today. We could talk Wonderful. about our firstborn mm. son being born in Sewickley Valley mm -hmm. Hospital. Um, so you never know who shows up, but it's wonderful. So come on to Alabama, Irondale, Alabama. We'd love to have you. And right now, we're going to go straight to Joan to hear what she has for us. And then we're going to hear from Father Leonard. So, Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, hello from Rome, and greetings to all of you at home. And I have to say, what a great topic you have for today. And I say this because Catholic education and religious needs for special needs people are a topic, will be a topic, next month in a very important conference at the Vatican. It's co-sponsored, collaborated by the Pontifical Council for Culture and the Kairos Forum. Now, the Kairos Forum for Cognitive Disabilities is led by Executive Director Chris Kanjami, and I spoke to her recently in Rome. And she told me that the Kairos Forum is an organization that seeks to highlight and respond to the spiritual and religious needs of people with disabilities. And Christina told me one important aspect that's rarely brought into a conversation or even celebrated is the presence and impact of disability in faith communities. In fact, she said, this aspect of disabilities is one that affects both the disabled and their family members. For so often, we think of disabled as someone with a physical disability, therefore physical therapy. But what about religious and spiritual needs? And in fact, Kairos looks to develop new and effective means for spiritual care and uh, religious education. Now, a press release on the Vatican website about this conference asks, what might it mean to live life in all of its fullness and for disabled people and their loved ones to live well together? So the question has not only to do with pastoral concern in this regard, but we must defend and protect the rights of the disabled people. And, said Christina, the way in which disability is defined and perceived ultimately has very significant impact on the church, on culture, and on society. Really important topic, but that's it for today, so back to you. Thank you so much, Joan. Mm -hmm. Another wonderful report, mm -hmm. timely report, yes. people coming together with cognitive mm -hmm. disabilities, people who care for them, and the Holy Father stating, and those that work with mm -hmm. people uh, who have these disabilities, saying, we want them to have a comprehensive experience. Mm -hmm. They have the right to religious, sure. spiritual education, right. as well as academic, dealing with their physical needs. The church has mm -hmm. a special task 
to bring them into fullness, mm -hmm. offer them everything that God mm -hmm. has to offer mm -hmm. to them. Powerful. It is, absolutely. Um, and uh, we saw this with Allison today. You know, she had such a, a heart for the special needs children and she stepped out in faith, you know, uh, putting fear aside and, and making this happen through, of course, the grace and power of God. But this type of, uh, of work, of outreach, is very much needed uh, in the church and, of yeah. course, in the world. Yeah. You know, uh, we, this, people look, well, have different impressions of special needs children, right. but, but we have to see them as Jesus would see them. You know, Jesus sees life. Jesus sees potential. He sees goodness. He sees uh, opportunity there. Yeah. And, you know, with, with God, with, with his power, you know, we can do all things. And, you know, through the years, you know, watching TV and, and other things and even meeting uh, special needs children, you know, some of them are, are just so mm -hmm. talented. You know, they have such a very beautiful, wonderful gifts, you know, and even I've seen them playing instruments and, uh, you know, just doing wonderful things, the Special Olympics and all of that. And, you know, it's, it's amazing working with technology and all, you know, it, uh, it, you know, we, I remember St. Paul, it says, uh, in, in our weakness, God is, is made strong. There, there is his power, you know, yeah. his, grace, our, his grace is sufficient for yeah. thee. For when we, we are weak, when, then we are strong. Yeah. And, and this is what the Lord wants to do in, in, in special needs, but in everybody as well. Yeah. Well, Immaculate Conception School mm -hmm. has been so enriched right. in what the Holy Father is saying and Joan was sharing with us. It's not simply that we're accommodating and we're welcoming, which we should be, mm -hmm. um, but we need to focus upon the blessing mm -hmm. children with mm -hmm. sp special needs are mm -hmm. to us, simply for mm -hmm. who they are, right. and right. that they are part of the mm -hmm. family, that they bring mm -hmm. gifts in, in right. who they are, and they help to make us all that of we course. can be. And so when we welcome in that mm -hmm. way, we are just so enriched mm -hmm. you know, in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And in, in this culture, in this culture sure. that in so many ways is perfectionistic mm -hmm. and, and various commercials and message mm -hmm. that are being sent through the culture. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the church to stand, I mean, this is sure. part of the gospel of life. Of course. The it gospel is. of the sacredness and dignity, the inestimable worth, value, mm -hmm. and dignity of every human being, right. equal worth, value, and dignity in mm -hmm. the womb, outside of the womb, what mm -hmm. we could do, what we can't do. Still, the essence of our mm -hmm. being is mm -hmm. sacred before Almighty God, right. and we need every member that's right. Every member, mm -hmm. because all together, mm -hmm. then can we be the body of Christ. Right. And, and most often, the special needs child brings us the love of Christ in such an unconditional right. way. Mm -hmm. You know, they're so merciful. Their love is so pure. You know, and, and it's amazing. You know, well, we used to we attend saying, a parish at St. Francis of mm -hmm. Assisi in Bessemer, and mm -hmm. there were uh, two young men, and one was an African-American mm -hmm. Down syndrome boy, and the other one was Sam, and he had some disabilities. Mm -hmm. And But our diocese has mm -hmm. a, a group where they all come to on a Saturday program, and Father Cullen mm -hmm. does that for the diocese, because maybe sometimes it is a lot for a parish to catechize and mm -hmm. teach them, you know, they have special needs and everything, and so sometimes they get made for that but every Sunday mm -hmm. every Sunday mm -hmm. those little guys would come up and give me the greatest big hug mm -hmm. maybe some other people nobody said hello to me yeah. but those little guys came up oh, and yeah. hugged me because they were bringing the unconditional love of God and mm -hmm. you would and you know what sometimes you needed a hug that's right. You yeah. needed a mm -hmm. hug. And they, I'd be just like, hey. And I hadn't been there for a couple of years. You go in. They, they know mm -hmm. exactly who you are. Sit down. Hey, Miss Joy, mm -hmm. and hug you. And just, ah, oh, you know, just give you the love of God. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, they often will show us the affection, the support that, you know, mm -hmm. we need. And, and there they are. They have it. And they give mm -hmm. it so freely and yeah. so, so purely. Mm -hmm. you know? we, we receive quite a few emails from people mm -hmm. who have children right. with special needs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those parents are really hurting because mm -hmm. it's just so difficult right. to find what's needed and especially with, within the church, mm -hmm. you know? And they really want to have their child tended to and their child to make a contribution within in the church. Right. So we thank God for what society offers. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these people like, I want them to have the fullness mm -hmm. of the experience of yeah. the faith and, and the cool. love of God here. So yeah. we want to say to all of our viewers out there, we hope you were encouraged today oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, don't despise small mm -hmm. beginnings. And we pray that what happened at Immaculate Conception
could happen in a variety mm -hmm. of ways all yeah. over. Just be bold, mm -hmm. go for it, because God is so committed mm -hmm. to his mm -hmm. children with yes. special needs. Mm -hmm. And if we would just boldly stand right. and make the appeal, mm -hmm. there are so many people who want mm -hmm. to give towards yeah. that. You know, and, if God has done it, you know, through, mm -hmm. through Allison and other schools, God will do it through others mm -hmm. as well, you yeah. know. That's how we step out in faith. Well, God, he did it in this way. Please do it here. And this gives us some assurance some confidence that God will work. Well, I hope a lot of yeah, people yeah. run with mm -hmm. this message today and so yeah. much would spring up and be mm -hmm. beautiful within our land. Right. Well, Father, can you give us a, a prayer sure. and, and a blessing? All right. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives. And God, we ask you to increase these great works with special needs children, Lord. We ask you to touch the hearts of people, inspire them, Lord, so that these works may multiply. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon us all of your peace and strength. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Well, God bless you. You can go to icaugusta.org, 706-722-9964. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.